All right, I want to ask you to open up your Bibles, please, to Luke 1, starting in verse 26 to 38. Actually, I think it was two years ago, my wonderful wife, wanting to help me out, gave me an exercise bicycle because she knows I need to exercise and she knows I don't like the cold, so I'm not going to ride my bike in the cold. I have moved it several times to vacuum, and I have dusted it, I think, about five times in those last two years. Therefore, the reason I'm broadening my horizons. It's a wonderful bike, very nice. It would be wonderful and helpful if I rode it. And I know that, and I talk about that, and I think I've got on it about five times in the past two years, but I start off and it's rather embarrassing that I'm <gasps> so quick. And even though no one's around to watch and tease me, it's like, oh, I'm failing, so I just get off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody can relate to that story, right? <laughs> let's look about opening up and using those gifts we get. So let's start in verse 26. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Uh, how, how will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. She who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. Amen. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you've said. Then the angel left her. Heavenly Father, this humble, poor little girl has so much to teach us this morning. Help us to hear and to learn. Amen. Amen. So what was so great about Mary? She's poor, she's young. Tradition would say she's about like 12 to 14. Dads, just look at your daughter. Can you think of her being engaged and pregnant at 12 or 14? She's humble. She is engaged, which was a legal process. It would be the same as our marriage. It was legally binding. And if broken, if found pregnant, it was punishable by stoning. Okay, so just remember that. So in our eyes... It looks like there's nothing special about Mary. But what did God see in Mary? Well, we're not told, other than he selected her to give birth to the Savior of the world. So there was something about her, and I think it would simply be her obedience. God will use any of us that are willing to let him. Amen. I am testimony to that, my friends. I've been here so long that most of you don't recognize this, and I say that all the time. I am not a pastor. I am not a public speaker. I wanted to work with animals. I didn't want to work with people. But God got a hold of my heart, and when I said, okay, he has used me to be a blessing. Amen. 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 And that, again, is bragging on him. All he's looking for is not somebody special, not somebody wonderful, not somebody different. He's looking for somebody that's willing to be obedient. I think that's why we're not told anything special about Mary. And she's from Nazareth, which is an insignificant little town. So there's nothing about her that would make her special to our eyes. But God saw a young girl that he knew would be obedient. What did Gabriel tell Mary God was going to do? <laughs> you're favored, you're blessed. Well, that sounds pretty good. But oh yeah, you're also going to get pregnant with no man. 
<laughs> and you're going to give birth to the Savior of the world. <laughs> but he said, the Lord is with you. He didn't promise her a life of ease, bringing the Savior into the world, but he said, God will be with you. When God calls us to serve him, to open up that gift of salvation and live for him, it's not always going to be easy. Mary was going to be ridiculed. Everybody knew she is engaged, but not supposed to have been with a man yet. And you don't hide your pregnancy, not for long. So she's going to be ridiculed. She had the opportunity, it was possible, that her fiancé would reject her. He had every right by law to say, uh uh-uh. Sending you back to your dad. You're flawed. She could have been killed. So this message we think is so sweet, we sing about it Christmas, but this was a message of, are you ready to suffer to bring salvation into the world? <laughs> Look at John 15, 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit. Your fruit would remain. Mary didn't say, ooh, 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 I want to volunteer. (laughs) It was not posted on Indeed or (laughs) ZipRecruiter. God came to Mary and said, I'm choosing you for this responsibility. And in verse 30, the angel says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. My friends, that angel is saying to you, the word of God is saying, don't be afraid of what he's asking you to do. Oh, yeah, there'll be people that'll ridicule you, they'll tease you. You may even have family that rejects you. But what I'm asking you to do can bring salvation to the world. So how did Mary respond? Oh, let me uh, think about this, please. (laughs) I need to go to a therapist, please. (laughs) I need to ask my church to pray. No. At first she was troubled. But it doesn't say fearful. It says trouble. It's kind of like curious. Why would he come to me? I'm a nobody. When God first started calling me into the ministry, I was like, who, me? No way. That is the weirdest thing I've ever heard. There is nothing about me that fits with the idea of being a pastor. Nothing. So she was curious about that. But she said in verse 38, I am the Lord's servant. That word means slave. In other words, she is saying to God, do with me whatever you want. I belong to you. My friends, if we're going to truly open up the gift of salvation, we need to respond like Mary and say, here I am. Send me. No matter what it's going to cost, no matter the ridicule, no matter what others are going to think about me, the world needs Jesus. Amen. 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 And here am I. Send me. That's her example. She opened up the gift of salvation. She didn't just save it away and say, well, I'll need this to present at the gates to heaven when I die. She opened up that gift and embraced it fully and said, do to me and with me whatever you want. Send me wherever. Allow me to suffer whatever, but may it be as you've said. May your will be done, God. A complete surrender. How can you know God is talking to you? How can you know what he's asking you to do? Look at John 6, 29. The disciples asked Jesus that question, and he said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. It's not a specific to do something. It's being in a relationship. Know him. But guess what? Mary knew God. So when the angel of God came and talked to her, she didn't go, you know, she had a relationship with God. She may have never met Gabriel before because we only see him in the recent time going to speak to her cousin Elizabeth. But she knew God, so she wasn't surprised. She wasn't terrified. She had a relationship with God. And so when he needed her to do something specific, she knew who was talking to her. The will of God for you, my friends, is not necessarily that you move to some country in Africa and live in a hut sharing Jesus Christ with the locals. Now, he may ask you that, but guess what? He'll prepare your heart, and you will know he's going with you because you're in a relationship. All he's asking is that you be in a relationship with him. You know his heart. You will know what would please him. In what ways are you expecting God to use you to bring the Savior to the world? 
Mary wasn't sitting around saying, oh, I hope he picks me. I've been reading about this. He's going to be born of a virgin, and I'm a virgin, and this could happen today, you know? This, no, she just continued to develop her relationship and her trust of God, so she was ready to re surrender when God called. But you know what? I can guarantee you, none of you ladies are going to have to get pregnant to bring Jesus into the world, okay? All right? But guys included, we're asked to allow the life of Jesus to mature within us, but in here now, not here, so we can bring the love of Jesus Christ to the world. My friends, if you look around us, there's so many troubled, hurting people. We've just heard the testimony of three that struggled in that darkness but decided, I want to trust God. They've already shared the difference in their life. Somebody had to come and tell those three people about Jesus. Will you be the one that will bring birth of Jesus into the life of others? Look at Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest parts of the earth. Amen. You don't have to say, I don't know how to preach. I don't know how to share. <laughs> Got the Holy Spirit. Same as me. Same as Jesus Christ. You have the same power. So don't be afraid. He's given you all you need. We were talking about that last week. So how are you going to respond to God's gift. Are you going to just tuck it away and save it for when you get to heaven so you know you're saved? Or are you going to open up that gift and embrace it and use it to bring salvation to the world? That simple. How are you going to respond? Are you making excuses? I, I don't know enough. Uh, uh, people will be offended. It's better I just pray. I'll wait for them to ask me. Sometimes you don't know the questions you need to ask for help. Somebody doesn't come and say, hey, you're doing that wrong. You need help. Mary asked God, how's this going to be? But if you look, it wasn't because of an excuse. She didn't want to have. She was just curious. God is a loving God. He's okay for you to ask him questions. How, how is this going to happen? You know, God, I, I took biology in high school, and, and this just doesn't happen. And so God answered her. And Gabriel said, nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Can you imagine if each one of us, just sitting in this church, just this group of people, decided to open up this gift and say, come alive in me. Use me to bring the Savior into the world around me. Can you imagine the difference? Jesus took 12 disciples and changed the world. I'm not the best in math anymore, but just looking around, we've got more than 12. This church, my friends, is a special place of love. Amen. You have loved on me and my family for 32 years. Don't cheapen yourself. You don't need me to continue in this ministry. You got what you need. That's the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit that's in me that has loved on you for those past 32 years is the same Holy Spirit that's going to be in the next leader. He's in you, even if you don't get a next leader anytime soon. There is nothing this church can't do to continue using this baptistry every week. Because you have that gift of Jesus Christ. So this morning, I'm encouraging you to open it up and say, may it be with me as you desire. Use me to bring Jesus Christ into the world around me. Whatever that may look like, you have my surrender. Look at Philippians 1.6. For I am confident, confident, no doubt in me of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. That word perfect means completed. Nothing will not be finished. God has called this church to make a difference. We've been doing that, but he's not finished with us. We open up that gift and say, like Mary, use me to bring the Savior into the world. Heavenly Father, help us to see it's so much more than just being saved ourselves, so much more than just being sure we go to heaven when we die, that we have your power to protect us. 
may we join Mary and say, I'm yours. Whatever you want to do with me to bring the Savior into the world, I surrender to your Lordship. Use me as you desire. May we pray that prayer with Mary this morning. Heavenly Father, we are yours. Use us however you desire to bring the Savior into the world, to set the captive free. Amen. Maybe you came with family today, and you don't know what I'm talking about. You don't know the love of Jesus Christ. We want to have the honor of introducing you. So we do what we call an invitation. And I'm going to stand up front and just ask you to come. I'll pair you up with somebody that will introduce you to God. You don't have to make a decision yet, but don't leave here without knowing him, without meeting this God that loves you, that wants to forgive you, to set you free, to help you know what it means to be desired, to be included and in an eternal purpose that changes the world. Come and let us share with you on that. Maybe you already know him, but you recognize, I've only been selfish and hanging on to this gift for myself and my salvation. I'm ready to open it. And like Mary, I will say, use me however you want to bring the Savior into the world. As we stand and you need prayer, come to the front and let us pray with you, please.